Hey guys, welcome back to the channel for Friday's video. I'm Ryan Knows Tech with TechInform.us, and I was not planning on making a video today. Most of you probably realized that I did not get one up on Wednesday. I apologize for that. Uh, so I'm going to make it up to you by getting one up today. This one uh, actually revolves around Windows 8. Most of you have probably heard the uh, public. Uh, it's not a beta, it's more of a developer preview was released, uh, I believe Tuesday or Wednesday of this week. So I figured I'd uh, go ahead and make a video and show you Mac users how to download uh, Windows 8 developer preview and then install it on a virtual machine so you can uh, figure out how it's what it, what it may look like and get some cues of what Windows 8 may be like. Uh, so we obviously need to download the ISO. It's about 2.8 gigs. It's going to take a while for a lot of people. I have linked this page down below. This is where you're going to need to go get it. It is from Microsoft. It's free to anybody. It is a public developer preview. Well developer preview available to anybody for the public. So we go here, we click on get started under download the Windows developer preview. Then uh, we're gonna have some options here. We can download uh, the 32-bit version or the 64-bit version. That's up to you. If you have a computer that you wanna run it natively on maybe, uh, go ahead and get the 64-bit if it's a 64-bit processor. For me, in the virtual machine, 32 bits will be fine. I'm gonna download the 2.8 gigabyte Windows developer preview, uh, English 32-bit developer preview. After you've done that, uh, we need to get some virtualization software. I'm gonna be using VirtualBox. It doesn't seem to work with VMware, uh, and I don't have Parallels. So VirtualBox is free if you want that. Just Google VirtualBox. There it is, it's under Downloads. It's a free application. I've worked with it before here on the channel. I really like it, it's easy to use. So that's pretty simple. Hello, Charles Trippy. Uh, anyways, we need to go ahead and open VirtualBox once you have downloaded that ISO file. This is what it looks like. First things first, we need to create a new virtual machine for Windows 8. Top left, there's a button. It is blue. It says new. Go ahead and click that. We're going to click continue. We're just going to go ahead and call this Windows 8 Dev Preview. Uh, it already knows that it's Microsoft Windows. This is up to you, this stage here under version. I'm just going to tell them it's Windows 7. Uh, that's what I did before and it worked. You could just say that it's other windows. You could say that it's Vista, it'd probably work. If you downloaded the 64-bit file, make sure you specify that it is a 64-bit operating system. We'll do that, we'll click continue. Here's where we get to tell it how much RAM we wanna give the virtual machine. I've got eight gigs, so I'll give it half. Windows is good enough for half, 4,096 megabytes. Continue, we need to create a virtual hard drive for the virtual machine. We're just going to do a VDI, VirtualBox, Disk Image, Continue, Dynamic, uh, Size. If you make the thing 10 gigs and you click Fixed, boom, 10 gigs of the hard drive, gone. The Dynamic, it's going to leave it open until the virtual machine needs it. Uh, we will make that 10 gigabytes, and we're going to put it on my uh, Data Doubler hard drive versus the SSD. If you just want to put it on your main hard drive, then don't even bother with that step, uh, but you can change where you actual, actually put that image by clicking on the thing where my mouse cursor is right now. Click on continue, create, there's our summary, yeah, create. All right, so here's our actual virtual machine. I always go into the settings right after I make it. I change a couple things in here, look under advanced, make sure everything looks right. If you don't know what I'm talking about when doing this, don't worry about it. I'm gonna tell it not to boot from a floppy. I don't have any floppies. I've got a quad core. I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to use full, uh, they're both processors. Under display, I always give it 3D acceleration. Why not? Give it 2D acceleration. Change our video RAM all the way up to 256 meg. That'll be fine. Storage, already knows about that, and the rest of it's okay. So click on OK. Now that's set up. Click on Start. This is going to start our virtual machine. Then we have a, uh, a first run wizard, which is nice. Before you had to do this manually, sometimes it didn't work. Click on continue. We want to tell it where the operating system is going to come from. It's not going to be able to install an operating system without knowing where the bootable medium is. So click on that folder with the green up arrow, browse to your downloads folder or wherever you put that ISO, select it and open. We now have selected a medium for the virtual machine to boot into and install the operating system. As you just saw, click start. It's going to go ahead and load up those files. Uh, the install process for me took about 10 minutes. Uh, but the first thing uh, we're going to get here, as you'll see in just a moment, it's going to welcome us to the Windows Developer Preview. Then we'll have some options where we get to select our keyboard layout and our language, which should be right here. Easy. Real easy. Looks just like Vista or Windows 7. Click Next. Click Install Now. All right, this setup is starting now. 
All right, from here, we need to accept the license terms because we always do that. Make sure you click custom, not upgrade. Upgrade would be if we're going from seven to eight or something like that, or from Vista to eight. We're not doing that. I don't know why that's an option. Make sure you click on custom. Here is the hard drive that we made. It's 10 gigabytes. It is unallocated space. We need to click on drive options, new, apply, okay. We just need to make a new drive out of that. There's now two partitions. Partition two is where the OS is gonna go. Partition one is just system reserved for drivers and stuff like that. So click format on partition two, click okay. It's gonna turn partition two where the OS is gonna go into a usable partition. Click on next. And uh, from here, this should look pretty familiar. If you've ever installed Windows Vista or Windows 7, this is the exact same uh, OS install thing here. Uh, keep in mind that my virtual machine right now has a dual core processor of 2.2 gigahertz, 256 megabytes of dedicated graphics memory, and four gigs of DDR3 RAM. So it's going to run fairly quickly. This install process, as I mentioned before, is about 10 minutes. It's already done 11%. Uh, it may take a little longer, it may be quicker for you based on your computer specifications and of uh, how much resources you gave the virtual machine. So I'll check back in in a few minutes and uh, we'll see what happens after expanding files. All right, so it's been a few minutes. As you can see, it has uh, completed the installation. It just needs to restart now. So I'm gonna let it do that. It uh, boots into the actual virtual machine, sets it up based on the hardware. Uh, at this point, it asks you to boot from a CD or DVD. Don't do that. It just knows that it still has that bootable medium and it thinks that you want it, but you don't. All right, so it's booting in for the first time. It's gonna do some registry settings. It's gonna take a look at your hardware and optimize it for the hardware. Uh, hopefully, that, that is something that uh, the other operating systems didn't do. So when you first get into the OS in a year or two when it's final, or actually looking at the end of next year, um, from what I've heard of, of having Windows 8 done. But hopefully, uh, it'll be better at finding drivers because something Windows has never been good at is supporting hardware, hardware in general, uh, unfortunately. I know many times uh, I would install Windows, I need to get in there, uh, and I've got no audio drivers, I have no Wi-Fi, I have 800 by 600 resolution display, I need graphics drivers, nothing works. And uh, maybe Windows 8 will get better with that. However, my thoughts are they're trying to support tablets and all kinds of stuff. Personally, I think it's going to get worse. Microsoft never really has been good at supporting software, and now they're trying to do more, and that's not going to go well. So it's going to go ahead and restart again. This should be the time when we actually get our setup, uh, but we'll see in just a moment. So here's what the boot screen of the actual developer preview looks like. This could be what Windows 8 looks like. It could be nothing like this. We have no way of knowing. So a couple seconds later, here we are in the personalized section. We need to give the PC a name. I'm just going to call it MacBook Pro. Microsoft would love that. Click on Next. This is what it looks like just after you boot in. We can use Express Settings or Customize. I'm just going to use the Express Settings. Uh, if you want to use Windows Live, do this. If you don't, click on the lime green text below it. Uh, we're just going to make a local account on this computer. Give it a username of MacBook Pro and no password for this account. Click on Next to continue. Looks like it cannot be the same as the PC name. We'll just call it MacBook. Next, finalizing your settings and creating the account. And here we are. Welcome to the account. Takes a few more seconds here to get everything in line. Preparing your PC slash MacBook Pro in emulation mode and we'll see what it looks like inside. This is where we're going to stop this video. If you want to see a video inside the operating system and seeing how things actually work, like the new way you get to your desktop now, that video is coming next week. I just wanted to make this real quick video going over how to get it on your Mac. I know I say real quick and it's probably like 12 minutes, but I uh, wanted to show you how to get it on your Mac in a virtual machine. So uh, stay tuned for that video next week. Have an awesome weekend. Be sure to check out our website, techinform.us. If you have any questions, email me, ryan at techinform.us, or sorry, tweet, tweet me. You know, twitter.com slash uh, James R. Schultz. So again, have an awesome weekend. Subscribe if you like the channel. And I'll, and I'll talk to you guys next week. Bye.